I'm making this video because I wish I had this content in June when I began my Databricks journey with machine learning. There are two ways of hosting machine learning fundamentally. One is to use a Databricks model serving endpoint, and the other one is to use an MLflow UDF inside a job. And I'm gonna show you when and how you make the decision of which to use and so that you save a lot of time because it took us a while to learn these things. So there are basically four types of using machine learning in an application in Databricks. And I'm gonna walk you through those four types. The first type is real-time inference. This is when you really need low latency, which means the application calls predict and you need a response as quick as possible. So in this instance where you need to do something fast and you don't care about price, you should use a Databricks model serving endpoint, which means that your application backend is gonna make a REST call you're gonna give it some parameters and you're gonna get a response back um, in, inside the REST call so that you can use it immediately. So it's really important if you have this pr problem, if you need this solved, that you use a model serving endpoint that is hot all the time because you don't want to uh, waste the spin up time. But if it's hot all the time, it's gonna be expensive, which means it's real critical that you control the size of the endpoint, that you get the exact size that you need. If uh, some example use cases for this would be like if you're ad serving or you need to do personalized recommendations or fraud detection, these would all be very good reasons to keep a model serving endpoint hot all the time. The next type of inference is serverless inference. This is very similar to the last type, except we're latency tolerant, which means we can take the spin up time and it's okay, right? So in this case, you keep the model serving endpoint cold and it takes a minute to spin up and then it answers the rest call and then it responds. The application backend needs to be patient because like I said, it could take a minute, up to a minute or two to get a response. Now, once that cold thing is hot, subsequent responses will be really, really quick. So this type of serverless inference is cost effective. You don't really need to control the size of the endpoint that much because you're not gonna pay that much. You're only gonna use it when you need it. Um, and it's really good for like analyzing data from documents or form processing or chatbots. I think everyone's creating JNAI chatbots lately and I think uh, this is an excellent solution for that. The next type of inference is asynchronous inference. This is when you have a large payload. So you're gonna submit a bunch of data. You're gonna want Databricks to listen to the, to the however you're submitting the data. And then you're gonna use an MLflow UDF and react to uh, the data, you know, call predict, and then you're gonna respond. And typically we do this over Kafka. So we use our asynchronous backend call, dumps a bunch of data in Kafka, structured streaming job picks it up, MLflow UDF gets engaged, and then we um, drop it on a different response topic. So this is good for large payloads. It's good when processing time is between one and 60 minutes. That's our general rule of thumb here. It's good um, for these specific use cases, um, like image synthesis, known entity extraction. Like imagine you've got a ton of data and you're like, please tell us you know, what software products are being used, or please tell us w when people are angry or something like that. Um, anomaly detection with time series data, like you've got a big IoT project and you're trying to figure out when a unit goes down or is not submitting the appropriate data. Um, this is an excellent, excellent um, architecture for that. Costs can get out of control here, so you have to be careful. You're gonna control costs by the frequency that the structured streaming job wakes up and checks the Kafka topic. If it's continuous, that's gonna be a lot more expensive. By the number of Kafka partitions, remember Kafka can get expensive. Um, if you're hosting it yourself, you're paying for that. If you're using Confluent, you're paying for that, so you wanna be careful of the Kafka bill. And then um, the size of the Databricks job cluster um, is usually dictated on the number of Kafka partitions and the amount of data that's landing. So you kind of want to have enough executors to respond uh, appropriately. Um, so that's asynchronous inference. And then the final type is batch inference. This is the most popular type of inference, uh, but I think that's changing as we're using Gen AI and LLMs in more and more uh, applications. So this is when you've got a very large payload, like gigs or maybe even terabytes. And typically there's a data source. That data source could be Kafka. 
that could still be Kafka, but it could also be a database, a SQL database, or a relational database, or just a large file that's landing, or a bunch of JSON that lands. And now a Databricks data pipeline picks up the data somehow, whether it's on an interval or nightly, something like that. It calls the MLflow UDF and it builds a delta table. Um, so like I said, if the, it's suitable for large payloads, like when processing time is in the hours or days, you only pay for the duration of the job. So it's up to you how much you pay. Um, it, it depends on how long the data is, how large the Databricks uh, job cluster is, and um, how much data you're landing. And this is good for you know different types of modeling, for predictive maintenance, for churn prediction, things like that. You know, obviously where there's a large amount of data that you're operating over and you're, you're controlling the interval that you do it in. So there you go, that hopefully, this helps you decide which type of um, Databricks ML strategy you're going to implement for your use case. Uh, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thanks. Have a great day.